Hey book buddies, it's Katie here, and today I'm going to be gushing about An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This book, <laughs> this is a YA about a girl named Isabel who lives in a village called Whimsy, which is perpetually summertime, and there are fair folk who often visit Whimsy in order to purchase craft from the humans. So craft is anything uh, that you can make from nature. So like um, clothing or food or writing. And in Isabel's case, she is a portrait artist. And so fair folk often visit her to get their portraits painted. And in exchange, the fair folk grant enchantments to the humans and these enchantments are usually pretty twisted it's kind of a monkey's paw situation you have to be very careful about the way that you word your wish because the good neighbors are mischievous then one day the prince of the autumn court rook visits whimsy after decades he's usually off on the wild hunt um, He's very busy defending the autumn lands from the winter lands, and so he doesn't visit Whimsy often at all. But he comes to Whimsy to get his portrait done by Isabel, and it takes Isabel a couple of weeks to get his portrait done, and in that time they become very good friends. Um, they have a nice rapport with one another. Isabel accidentally thinks, have I caught feelings? for this autumn prince? Yes, she has, but it's okay because they haven't technically broken the good law, which states that a mortal and a fair one are not allowed to fall in love or else they will be torn limb from limb uh, by the other fair folk because they're brutal. Because Rook doesn't feel that way about her, so it's fine, it's just a little crush, no big deal. So she paints his portrait and she thinks she'll probably never see him again because he'll be off on the wild hunt again doing his autumn court thing, and he probably won't come back to Whimsy until after she's dead. Little does she know that she's such a talented artist that she accidentally paints mortal sadness in his eyes. So when he reveals his portrait to his autumn court, all of the fair ones pounce at this opportunity because any show of weakness, and you're done. So now his place as prince is under fire and, the, and they might kill him. So he decides, I am going to frame her. I'm gonna say that she did this on purpose and she was trying to sabotage me and she, she lied in her painting of me. So he comes to kidnap her and take her to trial for sabotaging his life. However, they never make it to the autumn court because as they wander through the woods, different things happen. Adventures, misadventures feelings. I just finished this book like an hour ago and so that's what it's about. Now now I'm gonna gush but before I gush look I made this. Please compliment me. So this book was wonderful. It might be my favorite book that I've read this year. Do I do I dare say that? I think I do. When I was describing it to my partner I was feeling like it was kind of episodic and he was sort of like, I don't really see the draw. It's hard to explain, you just have to read it. I'm sad that this is a YA because I'd like to read this sort of book where the main character is my age. I've been searching, searching desperately for a book that feels like this where the main character is my age or older. Um, there's nothing wrong with being an adult and reading YA novels, obviously. I just... I want to go into the woods and fall in love with a creature. Isabella is only 17. I'm 24. I'm decrepit. Well, I'm, I'm, I say I'm 24. I'm ancient. I am as old as the sky, old as the moon. I can be hunted and trapped. I can even be killed if I leave my forest, but I do not vanish. Sorry. Last Unicorn, anybody? It's one of my favorite films of all time. You should watch it. I'm ancient. Isabella is 17. It makes me feel bad about myself. Now, Rook is also ancient, so it's it's okay. Let's talk about Rook for a minute. <laughs> He's so sweet. 
He can turn into a raven. A raven. An autumn court fair one who can turn into a raven. When Isabel asks for an enchantment from him before all hell breaks loose and uh, he comes to take her away, hoo -hoo, because uh, she painted mortal sadness in his eyes, she asks for something that's subtle but that she could still notice uh, that would indicate when she or her loved ones are in peril. Usually the, the fair people, like I said, they like to twist your request, but, but Rook isn't like that. He would never do that. He's too nice. So he decides to do ravens. You know, like you can count crows to predict what's about to happen to you. One for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, that kind of thing, um, except with ravens. And it's one raven, you're in trouble. Three ravens, you're in a lot of trouble. Six ravens, you're going to die. And at first Isabel thinks, well, that's a little conceited of him, ravens. He can turn into a raven, like, is he that much of a narcissist? And then after he leaves, she realizes maybe he just wanted to make sure I had something to remember him by. Because they were really good friends. <laughs> Rook. This is a Rook stan account now, this YouTube channel. I'll only make videos about Rook from now on. He's also funny because, unintentionally funny, because he is a good neighbor. So mortal things kind of escape him sometimes, and he just says little fair one things that just make me laugh. I can't explain it. There's a scene where she's really hungry and fair people don't need to eat as often as humans do. She's really hungry and this is when he's still kind of frosty to her at the beginning when he's going to take her away, huh? And she says, I'm hungry. If I don't eat soon, I'm going to die. And she's just kind of exaggerating, but he doesn't catch that and he goes you'll die how can this be <laughs> there's another scene where he needs to stay a raven for reasons and he doesn't want to stay a raven he finds it kind of demeaning at the time and he wants to be his full form and the way that isabel convinces him to stay a raven is by saying you're such a pretty bird such beautiful feathers such a pretty bird <laughs> and then he stays a bird <laughs> i love fair people i i love one thing that I deeply appreciate about this book is that it treats the fair folk with the respect and fear that they deserve. I find that a lot of times people will be like, ooh, fairies, oh, they're so shiny. No, they'll kill you, all right? Treat them with respect. They have so much power. Make sure you set out an offering of milk and lavender on Beltane, you fools. It's important. Be kind to the, to the fair folk, or else. And even though I know this and try to abide by it in my day-to-day -day life, if I ever encountered a ring, I would, I would jump in it. And I know I'm not supposed to do that. And I know that they would, they would probably eat me. And you know what? When that happens, do not prosecute them. They caught me slipping. <laughs> but this book makes sure to actually make them kind of scary at times. And I appreciate that. When their glamours come off, they look like tree demons, and I'm here for that. The king of the summer court is so terrifying that if you think his name in the summer lands, he will come after you. I love that. There's a scene where they're in the summer lands, and there's a bunch of statues of the Alder King, and Isabel's <laughs> looking at all these statues, trying really hard not to think his name because it was scary. I felt real fear. Also, Hemlock, she is not the queen of the Winter Court, but she, she commands the, the wild hunt, the, the dogs made out of vines and evil. She's terrifying. She never wears the glamour. She doesn't care. She's, she's like the white witch, but scary. I love it. They go to the Spring Court, and at first you think everything's fine. It's not. It's not okay. I love it. One of my favorite things is nature horror. I can't explain it. You know that scene in Sleepy Hollow where he cuts through the tree and it's bleeding? I love that. Give me vines coming out of my mouth. When I am sitting idly, chances are I am daydreaming about the day when mushrooms and flowers will finally sprout from my rib cage. Nature horror just feels comforting to me. This book has creatures called Thanes. They're like deer made out of 
human corpses and rotting vines. Just give me that. Whenever the fair folk bleed, plants and moss and trees sprout out from where their blood hits the ground. I love it. So I'm glad that they treat the good neighbors with respect, reverence, healthy dose of fear, good. I also love Isabel as a character. She's, she's a nice main character. She makes smart decisions. She has flaws, but she's, she's just, she's good. She's well written. The world building is also really nice. Uh, she has, Isabel has twin sisters who used to be goats who got enchanted to turn into humans and their names are March and May. And that's just cute. It's a cute detail. I like it a lot. Okay, and also, you know how the book community will always talk about enemies to lovers and how that's just the best trope. And some people will be like, no, actually it's friends to lovers that's the best trope. I raise you good friends to enemies, back to friends to forbidden lovers. The pain, the yearning. I... <sighs> there's this scene where there's a masquerade don't laugh, okay? Fair people masquerade. I... Thank you. I will read that in every book and I will never be tired of it. But anyway, there's a scene where there's going to be a masquerade and there's tension. I'm nervous. What's going to happen? And this was last night. I couldn't, I couldn't pick the book up. I was scared. I was shaking. I was crying because I thought... Things are, things are about to go down. And I couldn't pick the book back up until this morning because the tension. Also, the writing is just good. It's very cozy. It's very autumnal. These are my favorite things to read. I'd like to feel that I am in an autumn forest and you know, you drink some apple cider with it, you snuggle up in a blanket, everything is lovely. And that's how this book feels. Even though I was like, a lot of the time, it was also very cozy, comforting, safe, warm. Also, can we appreciate this cover for a second? Look at it, it's so pretty. This is a really pretty cover. I love that we're kind of getting back into illustrated covers, especially with YA. You know, there was that whole era where YA covers were all the same girl who was beautiful and she was a very talented model, but she would be like, and it would be like, the, the novel would be like Kiss of Death or whatever and she'd be holding a rose and and it's like black with like the lighting. That was cool and all but I, I love seeing colorful illustrated covers. I like the artistry of it and I'm glad that it's coming back. This book. And I've been I've been looking for this book for such a long time and I picked it up on a whim. On a whimsy because it was at the used bookstore for $5. So I was like, pretty cover, $5. But I, I've really been searching for a book that writes the fair folk in a way that felt right to me. I've tried to read like Court of Thorns and Roses. I know everyone loves that book series and that's okay. I have really good friends on here who I would not like to disparage in any way, but it wasn't for me. I really enjoyed the first half and then I really hated the second half and couldn't continue the series. And maybe someday I will read it again. Ooh, that's a good idea. I'll read it again. I'll make a video. I'll stir the pot. I'll add some drama to my channel. That's a great idea. But I didn't actually enjoy the experience of reading it at all. I've tried to read Maggie Stiefvater's books with featuring fair people and they're okay but again something is off and weirdly I haven't read any Holly Black I don't know why I need to read The Cruel Prince but I'm is he really cruel I, I kind of want him to be nice like Rook Rook is nice Rook. like I said I, I like to read a lot of adult fantasy I'm searching I'm searching and uh, I read Grace Draven's book which was Radiance I read that recently and I liked it, but it didn't have quite the angst. Like, the angst was there, but not really. And the angst was there in this book. I appreciated it. If you know any other books 
kind of like this, let me know. Especially if the main character is you know, like 24,000 years old like me, that would be really nice. I want to go on adventures. Am I too old to go on adventures? No, no. All the main characters of Tolkien's books are like firmly in adulthood, so it's fine. Is this a review or is this incoherent nonsense? I just loved it. So anyway, you should read it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're all having a great day. And if you've read this book, please let me know what you think of it in the comments. Anyways, thank you again. And uh, I will see you all again very soon with a new video. But until then, happy reading.